everybody happy Monday and today is gonna be a really really interesting episode because it's about something that's not specifically to do with language learning but it is something that so many language learners in my community have kind of reported to be one of the biggest barriers actually have these conversations if I move to a place if I go on holiday there so you know I'm not staying there a year I'm not there long enough to you know join a gym or go and enroll in a class or something how do I get to have those conversations that I went to the country for and I hear so many stories of people who move to the country thinking that's going to bring them all this immersion and they're going to be speaking their language all the time and then that's not happening. And I thought I've got exactly the person to bring in for this conversation. And that is Sandy. So hi Sandy. Good morning everybody. And so I met Sandy, it was amazing, on um, an entrepreneurial membership site that we're both on called the Female Entrepreneur Association. And we were just matched up by algorithm because we both started digital businesses at the same time to be accountability partners in my first month of joining. And my goodness, I was so, so glad it was you, Sandy. I mean, just your energy is so just magnetic <laughs> and right from the first time I spoke to you I was like that is someone I just need to have in my life um you were just so positive and so smiley and so just full of life that I mean I really did strike gold <laughs> you are so kind so I'm and that's my husband I'm sorry, am I being boring? <laughs> being boring? No, you're not being boring. My goodness. So I thought today it would be really, really nice to have a conversation with you because, and I'll, this is going to be an introduction and a half, but Sandy has done so much. Um, so she sent her intro in. She is a, a mum and a wife and a runner. She reads voraciously. She's done a degree in psychology. She's done an MBA. She's taught in college. She's done courses on marriage and finance and she's done couples mentoring. She's owned with her husband a tour, travel and motor coach. Is that three businesses? Tour business, yeah. yeah. Tour business, travel business, motor coach business. She's run three Airbnbs with her husband, and now, uh, in 2021, she sold. Well, she and her husband sold their home, and they now travel full time in a travel trailer, which they named what, Sandy? It is my prairie schooner. <laughs> Whenever. <laughs> going west in the united states in the 1800s families would have this large wagon and it had a billowing white sail over the top of it so they called them prairie schooners just like the ship schooners so when we first got ours and it, it i saw it coming toward me it looked like a prairie schooner so i'm on my adventure in my prairie schooner i love it and um, what is the um ford truck that drives the Perry's gonna called the white ox the white ox yes so so in general how long do you spend in each individual place that you're in literally it can be from one day to 14 days mm -hmm. typically we love to see our state parks in the united states and you can stay there for 14 days and consecutive days if you would like so that's Normally the longest, I will say, we went out to Utah in spring of last year and had the most wonderful time out there on Bureau of Land Management. And so we could pull up to a space and stay there even a little longer than 14 days. But there was so much to see and do there that you literally lost 
time. But even going into the small uh, one night stays, which we were going to stay three nights, I was just sharing with you earlier, um, in our location in Alabama, we were going to have this wonderful time this morning there. So we got there Monday night, everything was going great. Internet was working wonderfully. And Sunday, the internet just started going further down. And by this morning, there was, was not no internet whatsoever. So we loaded everything up in our schooner and our ox. And we have now traveled from Alabama to Mississippi so that we can have this glorious time together. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is dedication, isn't it? Thank you so much for changing your plans for us. Oh, well, and this is this is my pleasure. And thank you for inviting me to do this. Uh, you are always so exuberant, so uplifting. And so whenever you say anything about me being high energy, I'm going, okay, I'm just feeding off of you, Emily, I'm feeding it off of you, <laughs> grabbing it. <laughs> So tell me, Sandy, what is your life like at the moment with all of these different places? Like, do you have a kind of, this is kind of home and I'm working around it? Or, or is it really that the entire of the United States is your kind, it is your world at the moment? Actually, the, the United States is our world. Mm -hmm. and Recently, I read in an article on 1440 that Charlottesville, Virginia was one of the 15 happiest places in the United States to live. Mm -hmm. well, Parker and I have lived in Arkansas, or I have for 60, 65 plus years, mm -hmm. and he moved there uh, a year before we married, and we've been married 47 years. So needless to say, we've spent a lot of time in Arkansas. But the funny thing before that is I had told him I wasn't going to get married because I wanted to be a nurse. I wanted to travel the world. I wanted to see things, be places, and meet people. Well, that didn't happen for 47 years or 45 years. So now we're making up for lost time. We are traveling. And so going back to the Charlottesville, we thought, okay, let's go see if they're happy there. So we traveled from Arkansas to Virginia, Charlottesville, Virginia. We set up in a place there. We went to the city center where they made it a lovely mall. We had dinner outside under trees and lights. People are walking by and it was just so delightful. And it was one of those perfect you know, early fall evenings. So we sat out there and met some uh, absolutely phenomenal people. One young lady that was actually our waitress, she goes, oh, you love to travel? I do too. I just came from France with my aunt. Paris is so amazing. She said, I loved it there. In fact, she said, my boyfriend and I are working now so that we can move to DC and see what it's like in DC and save our money so we can go back to Europe and see what that's like. And I just looked at her and went, don't we just love Paris? It's just so nice. And so we struck up this wonderful conversation with Sarah. And what can I say? We really, the United States is our back door. And we're just finding out what's here and there and somewhere else. By the way, Charlottesville is very friendly. <laughs> it is happy. And it's very interesting. We found out it's a little bit more expensive to live there than what we're doing. But, you know until you go and stay a few days there you don't know yeah. that yeah. so when we were there Parker found out they were going to do a SpaceX launch in Florida so we decided to book it south and we went down to Florida and watched a launch in fact we got there at 5 20 set up by 6 30 took us a little bit longer than normal because it was sand and you know, a new experience and literally grabbed our lawn chairs and our water bottles, ran 20 minutes over to the edge of the bank across from the launch pad. And we were privileged to watch a SpaceX launch right there. And we met these wonderful people from North Carolina and, uh, you know, Jane and I think it was Bill. We sat there the evening and enjoyed the time and the few minutes that we had with them and learned about them and that they love to travel and come down, you know, once a month or once a year to Florida. And so that was the way the evening. I mean, that's 
that's just incredible and from the same trip i remember i think it was last week you sent an in, you did an instagram live from a national park where you were just there was this gorgeous gorgeous river behind you with manatees in it yes blue spring state park in florida when we were headed back, um, I have a, a cousin that lives in the middle of Florida. So we were working our way toward her area in mm -hmm. Blue Springs, had no idea. So one morning I got up and was running there in the area and somebody started talking about the manatees and over and they were swimming up this um, uh, canal and come to find out Blue Springs actually is a spring. It's like 130 feet deep in this cavern, but the manatees love to come in in the wintertime because it's a, a naturally warm location for them. And so it was just delightful to watch the families of manatees. And it is on my family uh, website, or not website, but uh, Instagram. So if you'd like to go watch some manatees play, I found them in a different couple of locations. And Parker and I had a wonderful Saturday watching the manatees. Mm -hmm. And we will put your Instagram, I know it's already on the post that said this was going to happen, but we'll put your Instagram on the show notes when the, um, the replay goes out as well, so that people can find you there. So what's it like living in every space for just a couple of days to two weeks at a time? Like, how does it feel to move so often? You know, I, it, everybody asks, does it bother you? And it really doesn't. My husband is so amazing at being able to put processes together that it doesn't take a lot of time and effort to do so. The biggest thing is we always laugh. I, he bought me a full keyboard. So I have my, my piano that we have to put on the bed. And so we take down our computers and our larger monitors and such and put them on the bed. We load everything up, bring up the stabilizers, hook on to the white ox and we're gone. So uh, like I said, he's made everything so easy that there's really nothing to complain about. And you know, with when I went from a 3,400 square foot house to a 280 square foot house, so it's so nice to be able to clean it in 30 minutes, <laughs> you know, when it used to take all Saturday sometimes. So uh, I don't know, it's just, I think knowing looking forward for the next adventure i think that's the big part that i enjoy so much is okay you know who am i going to see today and what are we going to find and um you know I, we love to eat so what great cuisine are we going to find today uh it's it's just it's an amazing life and i would mm -hmm. tell anyone to do it if at all mm -hmm. So I just want to touch on what you've just said, which is, who am I going to meet today? Um, the One of the things that is so difficult for language learners when they do go on holiday to the country where, you know, that speaks the language they're learning, or they go and they have their semester abroad or whatever it is, is that feeling of how am I supposed to integrate here? You know, I don't have a ready-made class. I'm not going into a host family. I don't know how to make friends. I'm not going to be here long enough to do all the sort of normal advice of just sign up to a gym or just, you know, go and volunteer for a year in this project. Or, you know, they're going to be there for maybe a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of days. And they don't just want to limit their... Uh, interactions to a shopkeeper or a waitress or, or something like that. So how do you meet people when you're moving around so much? Because I know you meet people everywhere all the time. Like every time I speak to you, you're like, and this person, and let me tell you about this someone I met, and let me tell you about this whole family. How on earth do you do it, Sandy? <laughs> well, uh, my husband has always laughed and said, I honestly think I could tie a rope around your waist, send you into Walmart, and if I were to pull you out, you would have at least three children stuck to you, and y'all would be talking and laughing and having the greatest time. And I think he's correct. 
And some days, you know, when you want to run into Walmart or run into the grocery store or whatever real quick, I honestly come back thinking I have Talk To Me tattooed on my forehead because I found all of these amazing people to talk to. But I do think it is, I love to look into the eyes of people. I love to see what's there. Um, you know, ancient text talks about that the eye is the gateway to the heart or the soul. And, and I believe that is true. And so I think when I look in, uh, talk to people, I look at, to look in their heart, uh, to their eyes, into their hearts, into their minds. And I really think that that's one way that I connect with so many people. In fact, a funny story that yesterday we were, like I said, we just got into our park. And so I was walking to the restroom and I met the most, uh, the sweetest couple as they, I was walking, they had this little white fluffy dog. And so I commented about the little fluffy dog. And so they got to telling me it was a rescue and what they had done with it. And we just were having this great conversation and I didn't notice, but I was probably a half a mile away from the restroom when I looked up and looked around. I had passed my destination because the conversation was so engaging and listening to them. And we started uh, talking about the travels and I said, oh no, I said, honestly, folks, I came out to go to the restroom and I've missed my restroom. I'm gonna have to go back. I said, we have to meet up again. And he goes, I said, I have enjoyed my time with you. And he said, you are such a sweet lady. He said, yes. He said, I have enjoyed myself. He says, I'm almost 80 years old. And it's such a pleasure to meet someone like you. And I'm thinking, it was a pleasure to me to meet him. Mm -hmm. So Pam and Bob were so uh, welcoming yesterday and told me about their little fluffy puppy. And that, I think, is it. Mm -hmm. I I look at the people and if I don't know, you know, if I don't know what to say, there's always something, the dog, you know, um, just asking them where they're from and the other side of it. And I will say this too, we had talked about traveling and talked about if you get the opportunity, if you're a language learner, if you're just someone that wants new experiences, go, just go. Even we went to Paris uh, for one of our anniversaries and did not learn the language. We we really went in such novices. And so we would ask questions of our the people that came around if we were asking directions and tried to explain to them English, you know, and a lot of people would shake their heads and they'd just start talking English and some of them would just shake their heads no and we'd say Rudy, whatever, the street and they'd point. So, you know, uh, so don't be afraid to go out and even if you're a new language learner, go out and do the experience mm -hmm. because you never forget those experiences. My husband took a group one time into Mexico as a missions trip. And some of the, the kids there were learning Spanish and he had a gentleman with him that was from El Salvador, so he knew Spanish. And he walked up on this one young lady that was talking to a lady that had this baby. And the, he watched the lady take the baby and pull her close to her and so he walked up and he said Tiffany what did you say to her and she said I asked her how old the child was and he said okay what did you say so she said in Spanish what she had said to the lady he said oh no 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 Tiffany he said you asked how much for the child and so that's why the lady had pulled the child so he took care of that and the lady shot, shook her head and smiled and everything was okay at that point. But Tiffany has never forgotten that experience as a teenager and we haven't either, mm -hmm. but we haven't let it stop our travels mm -hmm. to go out and to meet these people, uh, to immerse yourself into a new experience, a new language. I would just, encourage everyone to do that mm -hmm. and the, the thing is as well um it's important to say that i know that a lot of us here for whatever reason can't travel won't be able to travel for a while but 
with what we have with the internet there are so many ways of bringing the country to you meeting people in the country without needing to go you know it's not the same obviously it's not the same but it's absolutely something that we can do until our circumstances change or we we are more mobile again um and I'm going to ask you about that actually later on in the in this conversation, because I know you waited 47 years for this. And I would absolutely love to sort of touch on that as well, because I think there are so many people in my community who would love to be able to travel, who have these dreams of going to the country where they're learning the language and being immersed in the culture. And there is so much messaging from the language learning world that says you want to get you want to get fluent you want to you know master the language you need to be there and there are so many of us thinking well we can't be here because of political reasons because of finances because you know there are so many you know family ties or you know illness or whatever and i do think that i would love to hear as well at the end of this live we'll come back to it how sort of patient you've been um so i would love to talk about that but before we do i want to go back to what you said about the little tiny white dog because i think that is absolutely a key point using what's right in front of you to start those conversations whether it's you know there's that whole stereotype about british people being obsessed with talking about the weather but it's a surefire conversation starter because whatever the weather is right now, it probably wasn't that 15 minutes ago. So, you know, step one of using what's right in front of you, you had that little white dog that was your thing of, okay, I don't know anything about you two. I don't know where you come from. Don't know why you're here. I don't know anything, but I do know you've got a little white dog. Um, yeah. And that was your in, right? Yes, and I think Parker and I are probably some of the only couples out traveling, it appears, without an animal of some sort. And so uh, for me, it is a great introduction into people. In fact, we were um, in Georgia recently uh, doing our walk one morning early, and this lady had this little, uh, or wasn't a small dog, uh, going along with her. and. A lot of times whenever you're with, you know, you meet up with someone with their pets, the dogs will bark or growl or whatever. Well, she had had spoke to this dog and she told it to sit and it just sat down beside her and just watched us go by. Didn't whimper, didn't bark, didn't do anything. So I commented, I said, you know, what a well-mannered dog. And she just looked at me and kind of, thank you and kept on going well we had been told by the gatekeepers of this park that i asked about running and if it was safe and she said yes and she said now you can run out to the dam there was a dam on this reservoir she said you go out to this gate and it's got a little person gate open the gate and keep on going so parker and i did that that morning and when we came back the lady and the dog were almost to the gate and she said can we use that gate and I said, yes, you can. And I said, the lady at the gatehouse told me that we could go out to the dam. She goes, oh, I wanted to do that. And I said, sure, I said, enjoy. So, you know, we, let, we finished that walk. And the next morning I was coming in from my run and I met her and the dog at an intersection. And she said, oh, we had the most wonderful walk yesterday out to the dam thank you so much for telling me about it and she just opened up and started telling me some of the things that he loved chasing some of the geese and you know it was it was just a, an opening and so you never know you know the gate was an opening there as well as the dog mm -hmm. and so oh and, and there's been times that you know i've looked into some of the people's eyes like i've said before and you can kind of see maybe a uh, glazed over a herd or whatever and i know this one lady i asked her i said um, oh, you have a, a beautiful jacket. Where did you get the jacket? And she looked at me and she kind of looked down and it was like the stun, whatever had been there before, the stunness or whatever had, went away. And she started telling me about her jacket, where she'd gotten it and um, that she had had it for a couple of years and good luck trying to find one, maybe on internet. And so she just, we just had a conversation over her jacket. Yeah. So that's what I would tell you, you know, 
there's so many things around us and even if you don't need if you're there for a day or two uh typically i'll ask the people have you been here long in the park or in this area and many people will go and, and camp in a, a park near their home just to get away from home and so they're able to tell me about these one places to go hike or uh, somebody was telling me about a plantation the other day that we could go and visit and different things like that and they love sharing their area so uh just being astute to what's around yeah that conversations with so there's kind of been almost i think there have been almost three i mean i wouldn't call it rules but like techniques that you've shared here one of them is look at what's right in front of you the dog the jacket the hat a pin that someone is wearing something like that the um state that's mentioned on their registration number all, uh, all of those kinds of things where it gives you a clue in the moment about something in your direct surroundings number two is ask people things if you've got the choice between do i google it do i go on google maps or can i ask someone in my immediate surroundings bring those people in and number three is never miss a chance to give feedback if you had a conversation the day before and they shared a thing and you happen to see them again 100 percent go back and say i did the thing i followed whatever you said and let me tell you about it yeah 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 um you know going into a new country we have done that a few times um i guess sometimes i'm intimidated mm -hmm. but i have learned that if i will just put a smile on my face and go out amongst the people look at them and i can always you know muster up the courage and just do mm -hmm. it that i find out the most amazing thing about people or, or place and so if i will just stop and that at that point you know if i've asked a question and let the people talk and listen that sometimes it's interesting like we have had the most amazing talk just like the gentleman yesterday rob he said i have so enjoyed you mm -hmm. at one point in the conversation, we were talking about traveling and that my grandchildren are 18 and 21 so they have their own lives now you know it's not like mimi and grandpa have to be there and uh, he said would you please talk to my daughter and tell her that so that we can go away and they can watch their own children she said i need i need to, he said i need to send you to talk to my daughter and so we laughed over that but you know um people and i i believe each one of us have been put on this earth for a purpose and I would love to know what is your purpose, you know, or what are you doing? That's the inquisitive part of me. Mm -hmm. And so I would challenge everyone to become sleuths in their own worlds and find out about the people maybe that they've seen for days or weeks or whatever that's in their sphere that they could go out and learn something new about them. And if you'll just be quiet and listen, they will tell you. Mm -hmm. and people talk about them so so let them tell you and I'm I, never fails they'll usually ask me you know okay so what about you and so you know then you have the opportunity to, for it to be a two-sided dialogue at that point and I can't tell you how many people that you know have given me their numbers that they wanted to stay in touch or they want to hear about travels and so that's one reason that God's Fit family has really started also is that we can share our travels we can share our life experiences you know we're built on four uh, foundation or well five now with fun but you know faith family fitness food and fun so life is serious sometimes but let's kind of let that fall off the way and let's realize that let's enjoy where we're at today yeah and doing so that's usually always with someone else mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. go out and find somebody you don't know today i challenge you, and start up a conversation and see what you find out about them mm -hmm. and we'd like to hear about it let emily or i know about it and uh 
see what happens. <laughs> Absolutely. So if you do decide that you'd like to go and meet a new person, whether that's in person, face to face or on a language exchange app or however else you might meet someone through social media, if you do want to let us know, we would love it if you leave a comment on this message, uh, on, on this replay. And um, yeah, we'd love to know how you get on. So obviously, Sandy, you're doing this in your native language. And for a lot of the people that are going to be going to a new country for the first time, they might not be anywhere near that level yet. So I wanted to ask you, do you kind of have a particular conversation starter or like maybe a short list that people could translate and have in their back pockets. So I know you said, you know, um, how long have you been here? Or, you know, that is a beautiful dog. Those are things that people can have translated and then have as a little tool in their toolkit for when they're away. Do you have any more that you would add to that list? If I was going to a, a new country uh, and I yeah, do it you, speak, you speak the language a bit, maybe you are, um, you know, high beginner or you're intermediate. So you're not completely, you know, it's not complete gobbledygook to you when you go, but you've got some language, but nowhere near enough to be like, oh, wow, what, what uh, area code is that? And my goodness, did you see that incredible, you know, manatee over there? You're not there yet. Um, so do you have a few things that you would add to that list of how long have you been here and that is a beautiful dog? The same sorts of things, something that you use a lot. I would ask if they're from the area, mm -hmm. what is their favorite thing to do in that area? Mm -hmm. That we love to travel and so what do you like to do here? Mm -hmm. And it's like it's interesting to hear people say, well, you know, there's this park over here that we like to go and walk. Or, you know, there's a, a lake that we like to go and fish. And so it sometimes opens up, you know, I'm, a, I'm not a fisher person, but I'd like to kayak, you know, or like this family that I met at the Manatees, a little girl and her father, a little girl was probably six, they came down and were ready to go swim with the manatees. And so they were not from that area, but somebody had told them about the area. And so she came ready to swim with the manatees. So get someone that you can ask them, what do they like to do best in their area? But I will tell you with that, there's a caveat. <laughs> there is a fishing theory that men or women will get in their boat they will go across the river lake reservoir to go fishing over there. But at the same time, there's people over on the other side that are uh, launching their boats and they're gonna go to the other side of the lake or river to do their fishing. So, you know, everybody thinks it's always better somewhere else. And that's what the people will say, oh, there's just nothing to do around here. And so when they tell me that, I'll say, okay, so where do you like to go to do anything? Mm -hmm. And Parker and I actually the other night, we were looking for something to do and we went 35 miles, I think it was, to go watch a high school football conference playoff. Now, you know, we knew a little bit about it because my husband paid football players to go do this. Number one, we had no idea who was playing who until we looked it up on the internet from this conversation. Number two, we knew no children, no people, nothing. And we didn't even know the area. And so we went in and they said, do you have your uh, barcode? We have no, had no idea. They had to walk us all through that. And so we spent the night with new experiences, learning how to download all of this stuff. We went over and had one of their hot dogs or their hamburgers and we visited with people that were around us just a little bit because they were all trying to figure out if we were the spy from the other football sitting in the middle and they're amongst and amongst them. So uh, I would ask the people around you, what do you go and do? What is fun? And then figure out for yourself what's fun. And then you know what? When you see them again, if you see them again, like the lady with the gate, you can tell them, from what they said, you had this lovely time, or that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely.
definitely. And so what would you say to people who might be listening, who feel like they just really don't have anything to say, who are just like, as soon as I try, I freeze up, I'm not, or they have all of these ideas about not being an interesting person or a confident person or the kind of person that can just go up and talk to a stranger. What would you say to those people? I was, you had sent that question earlier to me and I was thinking about it. And believe it or not, I was a very introvert, quiet child mm -hmm. in school to the point that when I went to my 10th class reunion, most of the people there asked who I had married from the club. I had been so quiet, they didn't even know I had, gra knew I had graduated with them. That's how it was. When my husband and I married, I don't know, I guess uh, he encouraged me and I encouraged him to go out and be who we were to be. So I just realized that I had to go out and meet people and talk. And I'd always lived in that town. So I figured out I could put a smile on my face. And if I went out, truly looked into the eyes of someone. I could ask them a question. And sometimes it was even to the point of asking a lady if she had a baby. How old is your baby? It's, it's a beautiful child. Or, you know, you, I, I, I can remember this one lady that had a, had a head full of black hair. And this mm -hmm. was a baby. So she got to telling me about her baby. You know? And so I just started making myself put a smile on my face and that created a warm and inviting environment that when I look, when you look into their eyes, they know they, that you really want to know about them. Mm -hmm. and, so, and with that, they are then invited into answering your questions. Yeah. And I've had a few people that were short and kind of snippy with you, and, you know, you, and so that's fine. Yeah. You know, it's not going to be everybody, but that we actually have a question about this. So English Valley Cafe, thank you so much for your question. She says, what advice would you give to English learners, but I guess any language learners who tried to make conversations with native speakers, but experienced rejection or who were mocked because of their language level? Now, I know that you might not have done this with a foreign language, but you may well have had pushback because of your, I don't know, um, relating to like area, um, what's the word, rivalry or having an accent that people didn't necessarily approve of or anything like that. What would you say to people who have tried to put themselves out there and have got bad responses? People who were impatient, who were snippy or who basically were not very supportive of their language level? You just do the best you but I would say keep a smile on your face because we never know what their day is like. And frankly, this is my attitude of it. If they don't want to talk to me and I've done the best I can to talk to them or to draw them out, then I just keep walking. Yeah. Because I want to be someone yeah. in that is going to want to visit and will have something that they want to here with me yeah and so I try, like I said I try to look at it as I don't know what kind of day or life that these people have been in and so I I just try not to even let that bother because they don't know me they don't yeah. know what person I am Lord bless hang on your sound does cut can you just start uh -oh. once again your sound cut for a second oh, sorry I would say you know do the best you can they don't want to visit with you don't take it personal because they don't know you they don't but i would always say be authentic mm -hmm. and yourself and go on go meet the next person yeah i think there have been two phrases that have been super super helpful for me in the not just language learning journey but also the entrepreneurial journey which are um it's an invitation, not a summons, in the sense of you're extending 
your your hand in terms of inviting people to have a conversation but they don't have to take it and if they don't it probably doesn't mean much about you and the second phrase that I kind of repeat to myself is committed but unattached and that's the thing of you're going in thinking you're going to do your best you're going to give your best but you are not attached to one specific outcome and the thing is even a conversation with someone that is rude or someone who is impatient is still practice in your language whether or not it makes you feel good in the moment it's still getting you that one step further in the sense of you still did speaking and you still did listening, even if what they said wasn't particularly what you what you really needed right now for your well-being. Right. Um, even the fact that you could have that conversation where they corrected you in an inappropriate way or they made comments about where you came from or whatever it is the fact that you understood it the fact that you were in that moment is something that when you started learning your language on day one with your numbers and your colors you would no way have been able to do so in a weird way it's kind of an achievement still yes it is it is and the thing of it is too when if i've been corrected by someone in doing that and there's been a few times you know uh when i have been corrected in it uh i've always just looked at them and said well thank you i would not have known that mm -hmm. and that really will change a, a lot of attitudes also because it goes back to uh, again i want to be authentic with them yeah. i want them i do appreciate if they know that that's the correct way of doing it and i I am wrong. I yeah. want to know how to correct it. And, and they helped. Me. So yeah. I just take that as you said, it's a win. So I will just go on and like I said, go to the next person with the new language now and the new yeah. knowledge and do better, do differently. And that's the thing. If if your primary aim is connection building, that doesn't mean that everybody else you meet is going to have that same philosophy, you know, and there are all kinds of walls that you're going to be coming up against, but you're still going to keep on connection building just with other people who are more receptive, right? Yes. <laughs> Finding more people. Absolutely. Uh, when you were talking talking a while ago it reminded me we met a gentleman when we first started doing this lifestyle and he said if you ever want to meet new people this was his advice you lift the hood on your truck and he said everybody will come over and see if they can help you <laughs> and you meet the most amazing people and you get so many ideas even if you didn't have something actually wrong with the vehicle and so we were at one camp and this this one couple apparently were needing people to talk to we had so much fun and we got to laughing because every time parker went out the door this other couple the gentleman it was like he must have been looking out his door because he would come straight out the door toward parker he said what are you going to do now what are you going to do now so you never know who's looking at you and who's watching you and who may need the conversation mm -hmm. that you have with them that, that day so um always be open always be welcoming and enjoy life because as we always hear this is this isn't a dress rehearsal this is our life let's in, let's enjoy it now yeah. and I, we had our motor coach company we traveled for about 15 years i i uh created executed and hosted trips with older folks mm -hmm. And we have been anywhere from DC to Chicago, Florida, had the most wonderful time with these ladies and gentlemen. And so the one common thing though, was so many of them were singles because they were always going to travel with their mate when they retired. Mm -hmm. That's what they planned. And so many of them, something had happened to one or the other of the couples before that time occurred. And they didn't get to travel as a couple. So there again, I would tell anyone, even if you don't have enough money to travel, but to your next city, go and see the new sites and meet someone there. Or, you know, immerse yourself in something different than what you're used to in your home area, if at all possible. So um, 
like I said, it's all about the experiences. It's all about our life journeys that we're on right now. And just decide to make it the best that you can make it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you so, so much. And I wanted to ask you at the end, super, super fast. And I think you've kind of answered this now. What do people do when they know they want to travel? They know that they really want to see that country or they really want to go to these places and it's not possible for them right now. What would you say to them when the world seems to be full of all these people going on all these adventures and they're like, well, I've got to stay here right now. Do you have a message for them? I do. Um, I'll do this in two phases. One, on our travel uh, company that we had, I had some ladies that could buy out the whole bus and go. They could have gotten on a, a plane and have, would have went. I had some people on that bus that saved for a year to take a two-day two trip because they wanted so badly and they knew what it was going to cost so they would budget that and so Park and I are looking at going to Portugal now and you and I have talked about it it's it's on our budget to do and we're going to do it at some point but it just seems like the time has never been right but we have started researching we've gone on to Facebook and joined some groups about Portugal and to learn and so I would tell you to you know like earlier with the internet and everything that's available now we can go and research we can go and learn parts of the language not like we did when we went to France uh, 20 something years ago but do your homework research and sometimes you can get to places that are so incredibly cheap you wouldn't have realized it and then start putting a budget together to know what it's going to take you to go there yeah. and you know we can start doing that yeah. and there's a also whenever you start planning and, and uh, looking toward doing something like that there's just an expectation that rises up in yeah. you and you can't help but not talk about it I know I, like I said I talked to you about going to Portugal and said okay come meet me there you know and so who knows but I would say to if you can't do that look to see with your finances where you could go you may be able to go to next country over and see something that you've never seen before yeah. but if not, search and see where you would like to go um, that's the biggest thing uh, keep aware of your surroundings as far as the financial side of it the budget if at all possible and you know just start asking for those things in your life start like I said anticipating what could be in the future yeah. and and go all right. Well, thank you so, so much. And if people would like to follow your work or come and see what else you do, where can they find you, Sandy? You can go to godsfitfamily.com. We've talked longer than I expected, Emily. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, go to godsfitfamily.com. You can join the community and therefore you will receive emails when we have new things going on. Um, you can go uh, to Instagram and you, you have all that posted, but it's all God's Fit Family. Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, and TikTok. So I invite you to come and join us. I have one short story to uh, finish out with. I think you will read. My husband and I, after we came back to France, we had gone back to, uh, to finish out our degrees. And we took one semester of French. And it was an interesting semester needless to say because we were in our 40s we were told immediately that we would never be able to to pronunciate our words correctly because we were older and we wouldn't know how to do that okay well my husband can honestly say that was his worst grade ever in his life and it's still on his transcript but uh you know i took it and we we had fun but we were at my mother's house one night and my two-year-old niece was there and so we were learning colors and things and she was down on the floor playing with blocks so we started picking up the blocks and i would say uh, you know vert for green and she'd say vert and i would say in french jeunes yellow and she'd say jeune and we did white we did um, uh, blanc we did rouge 
And so we did all the colors and she was mimicking me. And we had so much fun doing that, that that evening. When she got ready to go, her mother picked her up and headed toward the door. And I went, au revoir. And she said, goodbye in French. And so I'll leave you with that. You may be saying au revoir and someone's saying goodbye in French. <laughs> So I hope you have enjoyed this time as much as I have. And Emily, thank you again for this privilege. Thank you for coming. I can't believe, I'm so glad we've managed to do this. And I've had so much fun. And thank you so much as well to um, English Valley Cafe for your question as well. It was a really good one. And hopefully it'll help a lot of people who have experienced that because it's pretty much a standard experience when you go and you learn another language and you speak to native speakers for the first time. It's going to happen. So thank you so much for asking that here as well. Well, Sandy, thank you for coming and for everybody else. Oh, we've got a comment that says, love the positive energy that we have. Thank you. And yes, the best. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Thank you so much for coming. And as always, this has been the Language Confidence Project. You can see my work, obviously, on Instagram at, at T with Emily, that's this account, but also at www.languageconfidenceproject.com. And we aim to make sure that language learning is not only effective, but also that we're kind to ourselves and that we really do grow through the process. Thank you so much, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.